Everybody, welcome here. It's Tim the Blacksmith. So today is part four of the Power Hammer Rebuild. Before we get into it, thank you to everybody who bought a bottle opener. Huge appreciation to you for supporting us that way. Whoa, this is trickier than it looks. Dang it, I'm gonna drop it. Okay, so a couple things. If you want an ax like this one, I got them available on the website. Huge appreciation for the support. This is super hard. Oh shoot, hang on. Hold it together, Tim. Okay. That allows us to keep building videos like this one. So take a look at the website if you're interested in that. Also, shirts, nasal lobdell, forging hammers, good heats, no wait. Oh shoot, I just screwed that up. Oh, I dropped it. Oh. Guys, shirts, nasal lobdell. This is the power hammer. So what I'm gonna do, good forging, fewer heats. Uh, this is available on the website in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and sweatshirt. And what I'm gonna do is keep those available as long as this power hammer rebuild is on. And you're like, Tim, hasn't that been like the whole year? Yes, that's why I made the shirt, because I'm running out of money and I need some support. So grab a shirt, support us on the power hammer rebuild. Thank you for being here. Let's get right into it. So this is the top of the ram or the bottom of the ram, the part where the die sits in. We're gonna call it the bottom of the ram. And uh, I hadn't quite finished machining the die because this was at Steve's shop. So I'm just gonna quickly measure this up and then we'll get onto the milling machine and start making that die to fit perfect into here. <laughs> So this is the new die here and this is the old one and you can see I've got a lot more height than it so I can still dial that in. I want it to be a little bit taller than this. I'm just going to wait to the very end when everything's together to get that measurement. What I did on this one for the indicating slot pin, I left it rounded on the bottom so the pin will just sit in there. I'll just round the pin up because on this one with the square shoulder, it, you can actually see that's where it has a crack line. and. I felt like, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. Cracked all up in here, right? So anyways, that's why I did that like that. I think this is pretty good. So I'm gonna start now working on the indicating pin. This is where the indicating pin goes in. But what I'm realizing now that I'm not super happy about is like how unflat this all is in here. Like really what it needs is just a couple passes, clean this all up so it's really crispy so that die sits nice and square. Because if it doesn't sit square, then that's really hard to get these wedges and the die to sit nice on the dovetail and then that can start to cause really bad things to happen. So I'm, I'm uneasy about that but I'm going to keep going because I'm hoping it'll just work itself out here but we'll see.
So, got the pin all machined up here. Let's see how it fits. Can live with that. That's pretty sweet, actually. What was unfortunate is I didn't have a 13 16th end mill, and that's what this hole is. So I had to put the shoulder in there for this part, but I think it's going to work out. Okay, let's find out. It should just slip straight on. And then that'll sit just like that. It's pretty sweet. Might have to do a little bit more work on it yet. But I'm going to start working on the wedge and we'll see how that works out for us. So what's really important is that the wedge sits just perfect on this part. Somebody's messed around with wedges on this bad boy, hey? But it's almost 100 years old, so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. So I'm actually going to start making the wedge out of this piece of 4140. This actually was that offcut of the die here when it was in the circle. So I'm going to use that. It worked great. We'll just cut it down, stick it in the forge, and then we'll machine it. Okay, so we're gonna see how I did here with this bad boy. Well, you know what? I might not even be able to check just due to the uh, edges not being radiused yet. Uh, Timothy? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I was just looking at fitting this wedge up here and uh, I actually biffed it really, really bad. I forgot that the taper on this part now mattered because of this parallelogram. So basically I'm trying to get the fat side into the thin side over here. So that was really, really stupid. So that's a huge setback. So I'm going to remake it. But I'm going to check, I'm going to actually cut this off and just make sure that all my math is right so that when I redo it, I can just for sure get this. So anyways, I've been looking at this closer and what I'm realizing is that this dovetail is actually really messed up. So the, this straight edge, if you put this in here, I don't know if you can see that it, it rocks back and forth and that's like really bad because that means that the wedge is only getting contact in about this area here. And then this is also pretty rough in here, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm trying to figure out what I have to do. Like obviously this should get machined. I can't do it here. The mill isn't big enough. So I'm not sure if I got to take it back to Steve to get him to touch it up or if I can figure something out to, to do it here. So that's kind of the problem right now. This is also possible. This is for sure wrong. I'm not quite sure on the taper yet if that's right or not, just because this is so messed up. So I gotta think on this a little bit. So I've just been looking at this for a good while, seeing if there's some way that I can jimmy rig this in the milling machine. And I think, 
I'm just going to talk to Steve to see if he can do it. They can do it so much faster and better than I can. And we know it's done right for recleaning this up. So I'm actually going to stop working on the die and the wedge because that might be changing a little bit now. And I'm going to start working actually on the leather seals. There's two leather seals. It goes in the part over here. You probably can't see that. We're going to get that set up and then we'll see how long this takes to get Steve to run it through a shop before we can start to put things back together. So let's start working on those seals. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, cutting this leather here for the seals. I've got two different pieces of leather because I think they're different thicknesses and I need to uh, have a total of a quarter inch. And it seems like what you do with these is you just glue two pieces together. So if this is about 1 8 under by quite a bit. Oh, perfect. That's 1.26. Money. Okay, so I'll cut out of this one and we'll cut some strips up and then we'll glue them together. And uh, we're going to glue them together on place on the ram so they should fit hopefully just perfect. So it was actually recommended to me to make these out of the two pieces of leather. It seems a little bit weird at first to not just make it out of one thick piece. But now that I start to look at this, what you get with the two pieces is you get the smooth side touching both surfaces of the steel versus a rough out rough in. Because you put the two roughs together, which is great for the glue. But then also what it does is it creates, I think it's going to create a stronger seal because the two joints are going to overlap. They're not going to be in the same spot, like just one butt joint can overlap them. And so I think that'll actually create a stronger seal, potentially, so it won't break. So we are going to set up and try gluing these together now that they're all prepped and everything. We'll see how it works. I was pretty uh, nervous about working with the leather seals. Like, it seems kind of weird, but now that I start to do that, I'm like, this is really cool. I think it's pretty smoking cool to make seals out of leather. So let's just see how the gluing process goes. I'm sure we're gonna learn some things during that, but uh, let's give it a whirl. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Guys, the camera turned off, so I don't know how much you caught of that, but the other one I glued it together. For some reason, it's like it's shrunk differently. It doesn't fit up nice and the glue dries super fast. So I'm gonna try to, this is one layer of the leather and I'm gonna put it on here and then I'm just gonna do a butt joint on it, try to glue that. If that sits up nice, then I'll put glue on this and the other one and then we'll put them together in place and hopefully that will work. So here they are set up. I'm really happy with how it's all looking. So this is just a pipe clamp and I made these little wood shims to sort of keep it so it could, the pipe clamp could do the cylinder shape. But then we get that flat press across the flats there. So I'm going to let that sit overnight and then we'll take it off and I'm hoping it will stay shaped, but we'll see. Okay, well, I guess I'm pretty bummed out about the fact that I gotta take this back to Steve. I still haven't got a hold of them yet. So we'll see what that turns out to be. But for now, uh, I'm out of time, so we're gonna end the video here. So thanks for watching. Shirts, guys, Lobdell Nasal. Check them out. T-shirts, long sleeves, sweatshirts. Lobdell is the manufacturer of the hammer. Nasal 3B is the model. And forging hammer, good forging, fewer heats. 
Nasal Power Hammer. Also got a couple axes available, Blackhawk, 1908 Blackhawk and some Hudson Bays. Check that out. And I forgot to say this, we will be doing another run of bottle openers in the future. So if you missed out on the first drop and want one, just keep your eyes peeled. We'll do one sometime. I actually don't know when, but it'll be in the future. And finally, grab your favorite hammer and smash that like button. Grab an even bigger hammer and just like stinking drive that subs oh, subs <laughs> subscriber button. I'll just put that back there. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.